How are you doing? So we are here talking about, welcome to PowerShell Summit, and I'm Phil Bossman. Um, I'm gonna talk about event logs. Just a quick little thing about me. I'm also um, the co-leader of the PowerShell user group in Raleigh, North Carolina. We meet, we're pretty active, and if you're looking for other stuff in PowerShell, that user group is there. As before the meeting, for the, the talk, we were talking about um, engagement, that is certainly a place to do it. So if you have more questions, certainly reach out. I'm always available. Um, I'm on Twitter and a bunch of other places as schlog. That's how you pronounce that word. And uh, it's a made up word and you go see me after hours. I can tell you the whole story about how that comes along. So, all right. So we're talking about event logs. So really Windows event logs, it's how it goes. The original thing where it first started way back in the day when they started off was get event log. Right, and it does. It only does the basic four, um, the core events that are out there: application, security, system, and setup. Right. So those are the base stuff that most people are looking for when they're getting stuff from. When they move to 2008 R2 and um, PowerShell version three, they also introduced a new thing called Get Win Event. Now this is its superseder, superseder to Get Event Log. Okay, so some stuff is in, intuitive in the get event log. If you're still searching online, you're doing a bunch of stuff, you'll see a lot of people still using get, get event log, and it gives you basic stuff. If you want to do some, call it advanced stuff, you're going to be using get win event because you can do some more stuff with it, and that's really what, what this really talk is all about. And when we're talking about get a win event, you have the ability to work with the EWT in the, uh, actually, what's there? Event tracing for Windows, so it's this whole idea where they throw their logs into different, but it can be logs of many types. And so when we're talking about lists and logs, so you can get all the logs that are available to you. You can also get providers. Now providers give you a template for all the different logs that are available to you. So you look at, hey, event 4629 inside of this you know, provider. Well, that has a format and a bunch of other stuff, so we're working through that. And so that's all available to you. Then you have to, in, in doing all these different things, it's very dynamic in that it doesn't conform to a standard, right? Everybody who creates a, an event log itself, it, they have their own formats that you put in things. And so in doing that, there are, um, you can search by hash tables, XPath, we're gonna talk about XPath, and then actually um, XML itself, because it's all based in the inside of XML. Now, kind of as a precursor to that, we're gonna talk about um, the events themselves, and I did this kind of like split screen kind of thing, because most people see the stuff on the bottom right, and that's how they work with the events. Hey, I'm sort of scrolling through the event logs, and I see all these messages and stuff like that. But really what I want to impart on you is that if you kind of look through that process, you see that it's actually XML behind the scenes. Well, if you, once you understand that it's XML behind the scenes, well then you can, and I know PowerShell, XML can work, or PowerShell works well with XML, now I can start using the power of the PowerShell, right? So there are event records, and it's using, you can search it by XPaths, and then it's XML itself. And so, yeah, let's see some code. Like, so sorry, that's my end of demos. That's kind of everything we're gonna talk about, and now we're gonna get into regurgitate everything we just talked about, but just now in the code. So we'll just close this. We don't need that anymore. All right, so going back to, to get one event. So, when you're working with get when event, you have the option to, like any other standard command line itself, there are the properties here. There is a limited number of properties that are available to you, be it computer name, you have this idea of the newest, so you can say give me the newest five, seven, 12, that's still get when event. I kind of, kind of walk through that process. So after, before, you can search by username, even type, whether it's errors, information, warnings, and then it's source. It's kind of like that provider thing that we talked about before. And then you could actually cert, put in the actual string for the, for the message itself. Um, itself. So I'm gonna kind of shorten this up because then you can see more of the console versus looking through it all. So you see, we just got the entire application log. So if you look in the event log, 
itself. I'm going to play with that. It's this whole list that scrolls down. So we could scroll the whole thing, but now I've got to click in each one to get in the same thing. Same thing up in, in PowerShell itself. I can say it'll give me the first 20. Same kind of thing. This is all PowerShell. It's all um, using the power of the pipeline. Of course, power of the pipeline. And here we go. We're going like, to start doing some work with it. Let's go get me all the group, basically group by the sources and say, hey, how many of what do we have? Right? So we have, this is very active in the, in the, it's writing a whole bunch of stuff. When RM isn't doing much in the event logs itself, hey, there are user 32 events. So what are those? And we'll talk about some of those later. But it's actually created in, in, on this machine, 20 of them over the past time. time. Oh, there it is. I knew we were talking about it. So we can also search, because we kind of just did it from there. Right? But then, again, we're talking PowerShell. So we can go, and now we see before is that we ha only have a few col columns available to you. Just like in everything else in PowerShell, is there is um, display sets. So it only gives you the parts of the pieces. So I think it's still big enough that you can see. But I think we can still blow that up for each one. So it does give you uh, the event ID, then the computer index, that kind of thing. So you can get more detail at that point. But again, we're still talking with talking event logs itself. So we don't get much information. So we're going to keep going. Uh, we can do some PowerShell magic. Say I can pass in partials or a, a constructed property. So I'm going to say, hey, take the date. We're going to take the last two minutes. Did we get any events in the past two minutes? I don't know. Let's say 20 minutes. There you go. Last 20 minutes. Last time I've been sitting here for two minutes, so that's why I don't get any events. Same thing. Uh, same thing. So just like we before, you can get the events and you see the, the properties that are, that are available to you. One of the values, kind of come back down to it. One of the values of get event log. is it does have the ability to tab complete for you or it gives you auto completion. So event type, you can say event information. Actually, you know, we'll do errors instead. And I point that out is it's for discoverability, is that you can go and get those pretty easily from the console. If you're working from the console, it becomes a real easy thing for you to do. You don't have that with a kid win event when you're working from that. It doesn't support those things because it's pretty much dynamic. And so a lot of that information so we may even get to something later on where we can tap complete some of that too. But that, that's something you have to inject into the process yourself. All right. So now we go back to get win events. And you can see at this point, actually, just real quick. Help get event log. Just thought about it, show do. So we did the other one, and here's the other one. And so you see, get event log has only two ways in which to call it. You basically give it a computer name, and you give it some, and it talks about the list, give me all the logs of himself. But then there's one way to call get event log. So it's still good, still use. I still use it all the time, especially for some old stuff. But get one event is the where it is the bee's knees, as we call it. I'll scroll up a little bit. So there are multiple ways to call it. So you can call it just by the log name, and we'll kind of talk about that. There are, I, I point this out because it kind of works in multiple ways. And so if you're looking for information about the log, the events themselves, you call it with the event logs and stuff like that. These two properties, if you're using list uh, log or this provider, is it doesn't really bring you back any events. It talks about like the metadata on one side. So kind of we just talked about list log will give you all the logs that are available to you. And then there is this idea of providers and which providers provide are those templates, we call it, that then go from there. And so the idea is that this provider is supported for inside of these logs. So you could have multiple log sets that are one provider. And we'll see that in a little bit. So I point that out and just know that you can see it in different ways. And of course, specify just the provider name. You can actually give it a path to the, X, the VD, DTX file. So you can export the event logs. 
and write it to a file so you can be sending them to somewhere else if you want to do it that way. And you can use get one event to actually go get the logs from that event, from that uh, export. So it is possible. And then it kind of talks about some uh, filters and we kind of just talked about. So filter hash tables and then the kind of thing from there. So you notice in filter hash table and filter XML, it doesn't really talk about which log name we're talking about because it's going to be inside the process. I'm going to put it inside the, the filter. So straight up, this is exactly what we just saw, but you notice it's a little bit different format. I'm going to cancel right there. And every time you have a new event, it says, hey, here's the new provider and here's the events for that provider. So we scroll up a little more, and then these events use this provider, these events, and it's actually resetting every single time. So these events are right next to each other. These events are right next to each other in order, but all of these came in this form, all of these came in this form. I point that out because of what details they get from different things. We still do the same thing we did before, um, noting that get event log doesn't support a uh, count, but um, when events does, so in, in that fashion, you'd have to get win event log and then pipe it to count and select so many in that form. So really at that point, you're getting it on one side of the, the pipeline, which can and cannot be different. Uh, let's talk some more about the event themselves. So the error records themselves, we have some more details inside of it. So just like when you're looking at an event, there are additional options available to you. So we have all these uh, extra properties that really aren't available to you in event log, but they are available to you in win event. So the display name, the level itself, we'll talk about some of the levels a little bit. Um, opcode, version, details, time created, text display. Jump all around. So we kind of looked before with event log and we can do this fun stuff with PowerShell as well. I actually think I'm going to do this. Because I have, to, I have to make that go over there. I might do that in a bunch of other places, just so we can see it on one screen. Right? So we have the ability, because we're working with PowerShell, is we can pass in dynamic content directly inside of the, the code itself. Right? Um, kind of talked about list logs. So similar to what we did with event logs. So what I want to do is go get me all the lists, get me the list of all the logs available to me. And so what being this is every single event all log itself. But you notice too is that here we have, I want everybody who has more than a thousand. Before we had this, hey, these, these log, this base log didn't have much. Well, this shows you all the logs and then only, only giving me the top 1,000 or anybody who has more than 1,000. Um, and actually I don't see kind of dropped off because it's so big. Now you can kind of see you have more information. So the logs have different types, whether you're circular, whether you keep them, or um, they stay, but it will slowly roll off and there are different ways. And this is administrative and what kind of logs that they are. So if we're looking at the event logs, let's say PowerShell. Oh, over here. There we go. And so this is that form that which you see. There are um, the services themselves create, whether it be an application, I mean admin, informational, operational, or not even either one. And so each one of these entries underneath this entire structure is basically listed in this form. So you see them. It's here's the root folder, dash, the next folder, dash, the next folder, and the next folder and down. So that's how you can see it. And then the final log is actually dropped out underneath. And we still have the ability to look at the system application and the security logs, of course. So let's kind of quickly look at hash table. And so, yeah, this is all kind of nice. We're going to do it all in the cons, like on the, the uh, in the, in the command line. But one of the abilities is that we can actually take the whole thing and shrink it down into a hash table. And so we can build all those, these, parts that we we're looking for. Here, this is what I'm looking for, it's a little below. So we're just gonna give it a quick example and then we'll talk through it. And so, so we now have the ability to 
say, hey, I want application, I want the MSI installer, and this is the ID that I want. So those are the different parts that I'm gonna get, and then go give me that filter. And so with just a simple filter hash table, I gave it the log name, the, the provider I want, and then um, the ID. Same thing with this one. I think I'm doing some filtering at the end. Yeah, same thing. So I can put it all inside the console, or here I'm basically splatting the whole thing. So what can you put in the hash table? You can put log name, start, end times, user ID, similar to what this is kind of the direct replacement of get event log in putting it right there then you can just get the different parts you want. You can give it the data, which and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And you can set as individual pieces. Mm. Oh, that's what I did with this one. Mm. I do have this, right? Yep, there we go. Earlier before, I did. Yeah, there's the MSI, give me the first one. And again, if you're not really sure what code I'm writing, you know, feel free to ask. So give me the first index of that machine. So that, now we're working with just the individual events itself. Um, actually, I think we're gonna jump. Yeah, I'm kind of filtering left. All right, I'm gonna do this real quick. Um, I have my server list, it should already be there. So one of the things that when you're working with uh, event logs overall is I want to talk to basically five or 10, 15 servers. And so you notice that if we work through PowerShell as well, is you typically want to filter left. And what I mean by filter left is I go get me all the servers themselves, and then for each server, I go get me all the application logs, right? And I'm passing the cred for there. And then I say, basically, after that, then I say, go give me um, level two, which is basically um, errors and then I throw it into events. But actually, we'll run this really quick again because it's gonna take too long, but it, I want you to notice that it takes longer to run. And we run it again, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the hash table. That's why I actually talked about the hash table part. Did I do it? What did I do? There we go. That runs a lot faster. Oh uh, yeah, I did measure. So as an example, one of the things you wanna definitely do is you should be filtering left. So if you go get all the events, so this is that idea of just PowerShell overall, is that I got all the events, I sent every single event, and then I started doing filtering down there. Oh, then give me the, all the errors. Well, I could just tell the servers themselves, go get me the, the, the logs, but only give me the, the errors by these two, and then pass that along. So really, when you're working with event logs, you should be filtering left as far as possible. Everybody understands what that filter left means. Hopefully we're good with that. Because the idea is, is let those remote servers do the work for me and only give me back the pieces that I'm looking for. Same thing we're using doing the invoke command and stuff like that. You should be do all the work way over there and then bring it back to me. So let's talk about, so we talked about hash, hash filters. And so now let's talk about XML filters. And similar, just like that, and you're like, what the hell did you just get? Or what the heck did you just get? So the idea, let's, let's jump back out. That was my little note there, see? Jump into the event log. So let's do system at this point. So if you're using the event viewer normally today, and people work with the GUI itself, you, you may or may not know that you can filter the log, or you kind of see what people do at this point. And understanding that, hey, I, can, I have this nice GUI where I can click things, and I can say, oh, give me this event ID, and 74 should be, and, oh, no, that was the wrong one. I think it's, I think it's application ID. And 74. Still not, that doesn't matter. So we just say, hey, we're gonna filter, 
criticals and errors. Oh, there's all the events I got. But what did you really do? So if we come back into filter logs, you have this thing here called XML. So this will build you the XML for you. Very easy. And you can come down here in the bottom right here, bottom left, excuse me, and click on edit the query manually. Say yes. And you can start messing with these values. You say, I don't want this one, I want number three too. And it's the same thing. And there's the exact same filter. So long as the filter passes, it will go. But the idea really is that you can use the GUI to build this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use the GUI to build it. Uh, you can say a specific time, and we just won't do that. And then this happens to all right. That's good enough. We're back to here. Okay, so we're working in here and we can build these filters, right? That's the, the gist of what we're looking for, right? So it will give you this idea and you're like, hey, look at these words. You know, there's some other paths. So I would keep that. So that's where we come along with this. Well, once, when I first started playing with it, I'm like, okay, so now I can build these, just the here string. It's just a big, big XML filter itself. It's an XML. Well, I can see different parts, right? There's my system, there's my system, and there's this kind of funky thing right here. But we'll talk about what that is. That's actually uh, an XPath. It's an XPath query. So, but hey, it's just a, just a random string. I can play with strings. I know exactly what to do with strings. And I can do some funky, funky stuff with it. Like, all right, well, I'm gonna pull the, the, the log name out so I can make it a variable eyes. I can take my ID out. And you know what, I'm gonna do the days thing. We kind of chose, you know, how, many, how far back do you wanna go? Well, it's unique too is that the XPath itself, well, the log wants to use milliseconds. So where it's less than so many milliseconds. So you need to then, Again, PowerShell is pretty easy for you. I know how to make milliseconds out of just a number. How many days? I can give you how many milliseconds in days. Well, we'll just take that many days minus the current today, and I just get a, a transient. So this is just a, as simple as a, uh, uh, a time span. So you can do new time span and all that kind of stuff, but uh, that works from there. So that'll give me the number of milliseconds I'm working with. And same thing, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Application, 1024, I think there's 1024. And there's these, those logs we're looking for as well. That's what I was looking for. I knew they were in there. So 1024. So we work from there. So once you have an, an XML, you can then do some funky magic to it. Um, one of the things we've all, I've also done in the past is taken this information and actually made it real dynamic and actually put it inside of a loop. And so I was changing the information as I went through the loop and give me all the different parts I wanted. So you can start doing some really wrapping. Um, I wasn't able to really get some real complicated stuff because I can't work with my, uh, my, my prod environment for this and I couldn't really build a, a lab for that big. It just wasn't feasible. All right, so let's talk about XPath. Is this idea of, we kind of talked before, is if you're using XPath itself, well then you still don't need to actually give it. Um, well, you can give it the XML, give it the log you want, but then if you just talk about the X, uh, XPath itself, you can say, give me the XPath. How did I get there? Oh, screw it. Uh, you know what? I screw it. Because I rebuilt part of that. We just did 1024. We already know why we just did that. Think on our feet. So there's those there. There's the events we just kind of talked about at that point. So the exact same um, filter that we just did, but now it's just in this form. So you say, well, why would that help me? Well, some people, you know, it's PowerShell. You can do a lot of things in a different way. And so it's not one of these things where this is the set zone way you don't have to do it. You can certainly do it multiple ways. Um, one of the other things is 
the, the log name is not required. And so what I've actually done many times is simple, like it'll give me all the events across the environment. You know, so one of the things that, that in, doo -doo -doo, there's that, that view, I don't know if you, you're sure, there is that view of, you'll get me all the, all your macros are on here. I don't even think you check it. Oh, you know what it is? This, I think this filter gives me, this is all warnings, errors, and everything. So that's the administrative events. But still, this, this filter is that. So we can look inside and see what the filter is. Filter doesn't work. There you go. So this is what that filter is looking for. It just goes and gets the different parts. So you can actually put it apart together. But I don't typically do that. I just think that's all I really care about. And I define the X path, but then notice I don't give it a, uh, a, a log to say. So this will make it short period of time, but you can certainly do it. So what I want to do, oh, that's why I did shorten it down because it was taking too long and I was scared about that. So this gives me an output preview of all the events across all the providers there are. Come on, I'll get some seconds to roll up. Shows me all the events across the environment. Oh, that's not what I'm looking for. Is that the one I did? Oh, it was just in the wrong field. That's why. I was just looking at the wrong place. Come on. So you can see that this one is an SMTP, SMB client. And then these are all the other errors across the environment. So you can actually group them down. You can kind of go for there. You can do out grid view to find your filters at that point. So in doing this, you can really easily query your environments on remote machines. And we kind of saw that before. Um, and then how do you build a quilt? We kind of talked about that. Use the event log itself. Use the, not the event, the event viewer to actually build these parts. I think it's fine, it's simple. Some people, you know, build a bunch of other stuff, but it's going to protect. So now we we're kind of talking about gathering a bunch of information. I want these filters, I want those things. We kind of talked all about the filters. Well, now we're going to talk about the events themselves. So. It doesn't really matter. I've actually not seen it. I've never tried to think through one of them, because ultimately it all dumps it back out to XML. It, it does matter to a certain extent, but XPath is specifically an XPath filter, just a subset of XPath that you want. So, like if you're doing any or if there's a server that doesn't have XML, you can do that in there. Yeah. Right, like a hard limit to, to like 90, or 90 or 20 or something. The XML one, you have like, you know, you have multiple yeah. sort of running. So, so effectively, what he was saying is that the, the, if you do just XPath itself, you have to only do one filter. That is, you have to construct this XML filter path. But the idea is that if you build an XML itself, and you kind of saw, I think it's actually it was a really good example, in that this, the marginal one, is that the actual, the XML itself, it is actually querying multiple different sets. There is, a, there is an XPath here, another one there, another one there, another one, all for the individual parts themselves. Yeah, yeah, but you're, you, you know, you go as deep as you want to go at this point, right? Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah. And actually, no, I think I might actually have some examples of some pretty funky ones, but I think we'll get there. If we get there, I wasn't sure if we'd get there. Um, so let's talk about the events themselves. So kind of talked about some pretty easy stuff. You use the same hash filter itself just because it's more, it's easier to um, visualize, right? So log name, level, ID, the start time. Again, we're just using something dynamic. And this is the provider path, right? And so what this gives me back is, is, is a single event. So we're gonna look at that single event, right? 
we know the message that was just there, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. We'll get, eventually get to the message. But there are individual parts to it, right? And then we have this thing down here called properties. Like, what is that? Well, that's all the other different parts we can get back out. So we're gonna run the same thing again. We're gonna actually split apart the properties. I'm gonna select the properties, I'm gonna put it all back together. So just, just give me back just these properties. Well, lo and behold, it's an array itself, right? Oh, there he is. Okay, I'll just scroll. Got to keep on scrolling. So the idea is those individual properties, they are broken apart. So what I've done is they basically you know, pivot chart, pivot table. I pivoted those these these the, those properties and made an individual um, property itself from them. See, that doesn't look very nice. Let's see if we can. And as you kind of know, I love our grid view because it just makes it, things make it easier. And so all those individual parts, I could have put, those are the, the, the details, those are the details. And I say that, granted, this is not really a good example, but uh, we'll go from there. Oh, this one, this one's better. So the properties themselves, it is, it is a proper, they are, there is this thing called properties, right? But there's also a method. Like I said before, oh, that's, that's what the, what's inside that single record is just an array of those properties. But I don't really want to, I want to do some other stuff with it, right? I actually realized that it has a method called 2XML. And so I'm going to take those events and cells. Oh, right, so we have our events. Well, let me just take, let me just do it this way. It'd be easier to see. Right, so it's an event, right? Well, that doesn't really help me, but it's an XML. So I get the different parts. I can say, oh, give me this. This is what's inside the system section, right? So I have my date graded. I have all these parts. But I know how to work with that and event data. Oh. All right, so it's just a simple XML that we can play with. So those different parts, yeah, this is, doesn't have much data inside of it. That other event, I don't know why, what happened to my log on events? I don't know why it doesn't see my log on events. How do I not have any log on events? Like, I'm logged in. What's wrong with this? We'll skip over that. That's this is the parts we're looking for. Actually, let's go look for it. Yeah, think on our feet here. Forty-six twenty-four. You know what? It's kind of fun. Let's, let's look it up for it. Event uh, an event. Is it raining? Of course, I don't have the ability to um, uh, well, um, you're right. I'm gonna try with that one. Uh, 4673. 
let's see. We're going to think on our feet here and try and figure out what we got inside of this. Let's see what we get inside. We still have events. What's inside these events? Hey, look at this. this well, I have the same property. So effectively, let's go find out what that event looks like, just so we can kind of see it. What did we what did we try to see? Yeah, it's pretty hard to see inside of here. But most people like to look inside of it. What is this then? So the idea is that this message is um, this is what we typically see. And if you see some people writing a bunch of code, like, hey, I'm trying to search the event log and I'm looking for this data. I want to change I want the all the events where this is the user I'm looking for. Well, to try and write this regex to try and mash this together, this message is just becomes really painful. But again, we have a bunch of other good stuff here. There's details. This looks pretty familiar. This is that this is like an easy way to find it. Hey, I just want this property from it. Or again, we're talking XML. So this is what gets generated back out. And we kind of saw we have an event, we have system, we have XML data. And then we have property from there. So in doing that, I then want to build an object of those different parts. And what do we have? We have some, we have some service. I'm going to change it real quick because we changed a bunch of stuff. Process name, and then there's a process ID. No, we did have a process name. Okay, process name. So what do we have? We have zero and zero. Uh, let's see, did two and four and three. Let's see if we build, let's see if we build this pretty fast. And yeah, it's going to be probably the same thing over and over again. Privilege process. So bring it a better better event that is maybe come back to it or if you guys are interested we'll maybe come back to it let's see what else we have to do i'd have to do some other stuff event list do the same kind of thing object review stuff that I was going to get to. Yeah. So in a, in a larger environment, and I wasn't able to set up an entire like Citrix environment we're looking for, but you can go the idea. Give me the username. I'm going to give somebody a the user SID. So I'm going to go pull out the SID. We then come down here, and we're going to use XPath to give me that data. So this is kind of a funky XPath you can kind of see. So we see we got our system. Here's the event log, the event ID for logins. And the individual part is, this is what that XPath filter looks like. And so to actually get back where the SID is in the right place. So we're in here at SID, and that's what it looks like. So it's event, then data, then its name is SID. And that's the part. So if you're going to do the filter, again, send it over to the remote machine. Have it just give you the data that it's looking for. So when I want to send it to all you know, 400 Citrix servers, I want just for this user. Well, I give it a user ID. It then spits out, you know, gives me a SID, because that's what's in the event log itself. And it goes from there and can go from there. So this is that example. Then from there, we can then take those events, create a, a, an object that is the login events and username, computer, when it was created, and whether it was a log on, log off event. So don't think I did that here. Trying to see if we had some other examples. But we'll go, we'll keep going. All right. So when you're working with events, always remember drop it into an XML. I think that's the easiest thing. There is a little bit of overhead generating an XML over and over and over again, but uh, it is from there. So we kind of talked about, I'm going to run out of time pretty soon, but we're going to get out of here pretty soon. So we talked about providers. This idea of what a provider is, is, so here's the first, let me make the first 50. 
Maybe 15. Something with some details in it. Oh, that's a huge. So, if you'll give me all the providers, this thing is the one. Yeah, there we go. That's the one I'm looking for. Sorry. So, these different providers, this is group policy, but this provider has a form that is stored inside the system and the group policy operational uh, log itself. And so, why is that important? Well, it's important because if you then go look at the group policy, these are all the formats that you can have. These are all the template messages that you can use. And so if there's an idea that, hey, I want to go and find all of the, where is it, group policy? Yeah, I have another one. No. Group policy stuff. And you don't know what the, the, the login is going to be. Let me see if it's inside of here. Um, provider. Yeah, I'll come back to you. Let's say secure. And so I'm looking for. So here we go. I'm trying to rush this through. This is a good example of what we're going through. So give me the provider. I want all the security auditing events. And so if it has events, and then I want the first 200, doesn't really care. But then um, get me the events themselves. Select out just the ID and, and the message. But then everywhere where the message says delete. Well, why is that important? Well, hey, if I'm looking for you know some logs, but I'm, I'm looking for a particular event. So hey, you're gonna use something to find the events themselves. This is a great way to find it because then, like, I didn't know that the 4060 is the one we're looking for. But if you're looking for user account deleted, well, that's 4726. 47, and if, but 4743 is the computer ones. So this is a, an easy way for you to then globally find other stuff in all those things. So you can find the provider you're looking for and then get them from there. So what's inside of this overall, too? We'll see for this point. Let me see. Um, actually, we don't want that. It's like star. Yeah, we'll say T. Nope, I don't. Uh, yeah. The object. Variable. Really fast. Really fast. That's okay. Okay. A lot of details. All right. So, what's inside of this thing? Well, I just want the first one. All right. Just pick one. I don't know. What was that one we be looking for? Uh, Anybody remember that number? 46, 4726? Mm -hmm. Equals 4726. Yep, there we go. So user count deleted. This kind of looks familiar. This looks just like the message, but we have a bunch of these variables in, in applied. Well, this looks like the events data that we're looking for. Here's all the different parts. And so you then can find the message and then know that here's the part that we're looking for. So without actually seeing a message itself, you can look at the providers and get the individual parts from it. And so this is the XML template it uses to build this message for any event of that type. So if it's using this provider and then using this ID, so that's what the, the event triggering process is doing. 
here's the data for this event ID in this provider, and then it just gets written in that form. Um, I think I'm running out of time. Yep, we're running out of time. Sorry, we're going from there. I think I was rambling for a while. But the idea is that you can use your list provider to get you uh, other details about the metadata for event logs themselves. You always should be filtering left when you're trying to do stuff. Use the multiple filters you can. Hash tables are really easy, and easy to construct and easily visible. But if you really want to get into the weeds, XPath and XML filters are your friend. And PowerShell is your friend. You, you saw me here. I'm just pipe this, the pipe that, the pipe that. And it's easily discoverable. That's exactly what PowerShell is all about. And um, hopefully you can really get some more information out of the event logs themselves and go from there. Thank you very much.